Hi, and welcome to Brems to Puzzles, and back to the World Puzzle Federation, where I'm now starting to do the puzzles from the 2016 puzzle competition round three. Um, these were puzzles that were set by puzzle creators from the Czech Republic, and of course we're going to start with Classic Sudoku 1. Now this is a 15-point puzzle that was created by Jakub uh, Ondrusik. Um, I've got the pronunciation on that one wrong. I apologize. I am terrible with pronunciation of names from, uh, from Europe. But um, and many other parts of the world as well. Now, you might say, how does, what does it mean by this is a 15 point puzzle? Now I've done a little bit of math on this one and I've looked at the final results. Now below you'll find a link to this puzzle where you can try it for yourself, as well as to the entire World Puzzle Federation archive. But on there, you can actually see the results from any particular month. Now there were 600 points of puzzles in this pack and people were given 90 minutes to try and submit as many as possible. First of all, congratulations to Tiet Vunk from Estonia who completed all all of the puzzles in, and submitted the answers in 58 minutes um, and was able to basically win the competition. Now there were 21 people who were able to um, com submit all of the puzzles um, in the 90 minutes allotted and in order to be in that top 21 you had to get at least seven points per minute. So the person who got 21st, uh, 21, uh, 21st position got about seven points a minute. Other people got more than that. Now, in order, what do you mean, how did they pull that one off? If you could do seven points a minute, then you were capable of being in that top 21, completing everything. In order to be in the top 50 people and therefore be considered one of the top 50 people in the world at that time, you needed to be earning five points a minute, which would get you about 400, and, um, which got you about 456 points. So not submitting all of the 600 points, but if you got 456 points, you would have been in that 90 minutes, you would have been considered in the top 50 solvers in the world. So if you're wanting to be considered one of the top 50 with these puzzles at that particular what you you know in 2016 then um, if you can get yourself about five points a minute that's what you're aiming for to consider yourselves one of the best have things changed probably am i going to be going for speed solving absolutely not um, but I just wanted to explain when I say what a puzzle is worth, this is a 15 point puzzle. So people would be aiming to do this in sort of two to three minutes if they want to be a world champion. Um, that's what they're aiming for. But I'm going to take some time to explain some of the concepts of Sudoku while I do this. So first of all, let's have a look at the rules. So we've got normal Sudoku rule supply. So basically what that means into every box, into every row and into every column, we need to put the digits one to nine without repeats. That's the rules of the puzzle. But I'm going to go through some concepts as I solve in order to explain how we do notation and everything. So I'm going to restart the puzzle to restart my timer. Let's give this a shot. So one of the things that we want to look for when we're doing this is where there are restrictions. So if, for example, I can see in box one, seven and seven can't go in any of those cells and seven can't go here. So we can immediately write a seven into here. Now those sevens, I can immediately look down with and say, I can't put seven into any of those cells because I can't repeat. So seven goes in one of those two cells, but I want, don't want to have to re-look for that. So what I could do is I can use what's called corner notation. Um, and in Sudoku pad, there are different ways you can notate. But what the, the standard Sudoku notation that has been developed is you put a digit in the corner when it is only possible to go into a limited number of places in a particular box. It's not saying that it's um, one of the only digits that can go into the cells. It is the, um, a corner notation is when you have restricted as a standard notation. You may just choose to use it in a different way at different times. Times, but the standard notation is a corner pencil mark like this is indicating that I know in this particular box, the only place seven can go is in one of those two cells. And the reason that could be useful is if I manage to eliminate seven from one of those two, I don't need to rediscover where seven can go in this box. I have, if I eliminate seven from one of these two, I can immediately write seven into the other without having to waste time looking for it again. So that's what the corner pencil marks are used for. And I can potentially put some more in. So for example, I can see one and one can't go in those. Actually, I could pencil mark one into one of those and then see that one can't go there and then find that as a one. And those ones allow me to say one's not in any of those and I can pick corner mark one into those two cells. Um, where else can I go? 
I can see seven and seven actually put seven in one of those. Seven and seven now would pencil mark one into those cells, but the seven takes seven out of there, writing seven into there, taking seven out of there, putting seven in there, and I found all the sevens. Right, one and one are removing one from those. One is removing one from those, so that's the one, which means one would be in one of those two because of these ones, but that one is removing one from there, putting one there. Those ones are removing one from all of those, so this is the one, taking one out of here and putting one into here. Now, this is now a triple, and I actually quite like marking triples because I find the I can often find things that I don't expect. And what I do with a triple is you put pencil marks into the center of the cell. These digits can't in um, can't be one, two, three, or seven, eight, nine. These can only be four, five, and six. And this is where we use what's called center pencil marking. They're not the same sort of pencil marking. They are giving different forms of information. And a center pencil mark is an, not an indication on where a digit can go in a box. It is an indication of what possible digits can go into a particular cell. So in this cell. I can only put four, five, or six. And in fact, four and five can't go there. So I can immediately fill that out as a six. And these can't be six. So these can only be four or five. And the five looks across making that the four and that the five. But the central pencil mark was telling me that those were the only possible digits that could go into that individual cell. These are a box. A box is a three by three, but a cell is just an individual place where I can only put a single number. Uh, and I can reinforce that here. What are the only digits that can go in here? Now, this is spanning two different boxes, but it's three cells where I could still put in a triple because they're the three cells that haven't been filled in this column. So these could be two. They can't be one. There's already a one in the column. Three and four is already in the column, so they could be five. They can't be six, seven, or eight, so it could be nine. These can only be two, five, and nine. And that's where the central pencil marking comes in useful because I know that two, five, and nine are the only digits that can go into those cells. That one can't be a nine because there's already a nine in the row. So if I ever, um, this means that, for example, if there was ever another digit that is restricted to two cells and something isn't, um, one of them is a two, uh, would be that cell, but it's not two, five, or nine, I get that extra restriction but I'm not seeing how to use that just yet. What I am seeing is in this box, three is restricted. Three can't go in any of those or any of those. So three is looking down in this box, which means this has to be the three because I can't put three here now because if I put three here, I couldn't put three in any of these cells and there'd be no three in this box. But there has to be a three in each box by the rules. So there's no three here. There's no three in either of those. That's the three. So this is now a triple, two, six, and nine. Well, there's no two there. So two is looking up in one of those two. There's no six here, and there's no nine here. So this is two or nine. Again, for this row, this is a triple, uh, two, six, and eight. So there's an eight. Where's eight in this row? Can't put eight there because of that. Can't put eight there. So this is eight, and this is two or six. There's got to be a four in one of those two. So this is four, six, nine. So this is four or six. Yeah, I'm not sure how that's going. Okay, something else that is powerful. There will be something. Four is in one of those two because that four is eliminating four from there. This is a four, five pair because four and five have to go into this box, but that four and that five means they're not in those cells. So this is a four, five pair, but the five is giving me the order. That's the four, that's the five. And that actually takes the five out of there. And this is now a triple, two, three, and six. Two, three, and six being the only digits that can go in there. There's no three in that cell. Not sure about the rest, but it makes this a pair because it can't be one, two and three is already allocated, four, five, and six is allocated. So this is eight, nine, because it can't be seven either. And now this is a triple, which is two, three, and six as well. The three is taking three out of those. So that's the three, meaning that's not the three, and I can use the corner mark to not have to discover it again. These are two and six. Okay. So something down here is now restricted. Yeah, the four isn't in any of those. So that's the four. And these are two, six, and nine. So it's just six and nine. Okay, something else. 
four is in one of those two because the four can't be in there. This is four and eight. Four and eight is looking up saying four and eight isn't in there or in those. So this is four and eight. So these, there's no two. I've got three, four, five. These are two and six. And while I'm, oh, that's a two, six pair. So if this was a two, both of those would need to be six and I've got two sixes in the row. The other way of thinking about it is that is a pointing pair because in this row, two and six are the only things that could go in those cells. I can't put two or six in any of those. So this has to be the nine. This isn't the nine. Now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That becomes an eight. But the two six is also looking down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That becomes a nine. And the nine looks across making that the eight and that the nine, putting nine in one of those two. But that nine is looking up saying not there. That's the nine. Um, where now? So one, two, three. There's a four in one of those two. These are two, four, six. Not sure. This row, need to put a two in. Two, four, five. So that's a two. That digit is what's called a naked single. It can't be a one, it can't be a three, so that cell there. There's already a one in its row. There's already a three in its box, a four, oh, actually, let's just look at this column. One, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. This has to be two or six, and it can't be a six, so that's a two. That's a faster way of seeing it. So that becomes a five, that becomes a two. The two looks across, meaning that's the six, and that's the two. The six and the two means that's the three, and there's no three there. Um, this column is missing the six that we were talking about before. One, two, three, and five go into those, but the three means that's the five, and that's the three. The six looks across, making that the two, and that the six. One, two, three, four, five, four, and eight go into those, but of course that four means that's the eight, and that's the four. This row is missing the two and the six, so this has to be a two or a six. This row is missing the five, so that is the five. Um, something, something, something. The eight, of course, is looking up, making that the four and that the eight. Something simple, I'm sure. So one, two... There's a four in one of those two. The four is there. So this is two or six. The two six pair means that's the nine, that's the two, that's the six, that's the nine, that's the six, that's the two, that's the six, that's the two, that's the six, and that's the two. And it took me a lot longer than the time that would be expected by any competition solver, but I was also trying to explain some basic concepts and all of that sort of stuff as well. I also wouldn't have solved it in a competition time because I'm not a speed solver. I'm just not. <laughs> it's not the way I roll. So that was classic Sudoku 1, something that hopefully will be designed for you to get your teeth into some basics. The first five or six puzzles in all of these are normally classic Sudokus, and then you start getting onto some interesting variants. But an important thing to remember is these puzzles are nine to 10 years old. So um, you really are, because I'm not sure when this is going to be coming out, but um, these puzzles are nine to 10 years old. So what you're going to see in these puzzles are creators who were working before this hobby really took off, um, because it was really 2019 and 2020 before these this hobby became really popular. So um, a lot of the people that you're used to as seeing as excellent constructors, these people aren't them. Um, these people were doing it way before there and definitely deserve a lot of credit for the work that they did. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you to Jakub for this puzzle, which I really enjoyed. Um, I believe Jakub said a lot of the puzzles in this um, set we'll find out. Um, see you for the next one. And as always, good luck with your solving.